What if your PicoCalc could become a tiny Linux machine that fits right in your pocket? Now, you don't have to just imagine it because I'm going to show you how you can do this exact same thing in about 10 minutes. I'm Jay Blanked, and today we're going to give this awesome gadget a serious brain upgrade, turning it into a pocket-sized computer for coding, retro gaming, or whatever else you can think of. The Clockwork Pi PicoCalc is really just a cool little device. You've got this retro vibe, a really satisfying keyboard, and a great little screen. Out of the box, it runs on a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a microcontroller. And it's great for what it is, running calculator functions and simple programs. But what if we could do more? What if we could run a whole multitasking operating system on this thing? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Thanks to this tiny little board, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. This thing is an absolute powerhouse for its size. And while it's not a simple drop-in replacement, it's a popular and powerful upgrade for the PicoCalc. This is all possible thanks to the fantastic work of developers in the open source community. The main developer behind the Linux Trixie port we're using is Michael Mayer with the help from N602 who also made the custom PicoCalc case I'm using in this video. By swapping out the hardware and configuring a new operating system, we're completely changing what the PicoCalc even is. And the best part, it's not nearly as hard as it sounds. Now, before we jump in, let's talk about what you'll need. Getting everything ready beforehand is the secret to making this a quick and painless project. So first up, the hardware. Now obviously you need your PicoCalc. Then you'll also need the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. This is the new brain, so it's a must have. To connect it, you'll need 11 male to female jumper wires. And if you're using the stock PicoCalc case, you'll also need that little hex key that came with your PicoCalc. The good news is once you get it all working, you can optionally create your own custom PCB for a more permanent installation or even order one from a service like PCBWay to clean up the wiring. You're also going to need a good quality micro SD card. Now a 32 gig is perfectly fine for what we need but don't go for the cheapest card you can find. A reliable fast card makes a huge difference in performance and helps you avoid weird errors. On the software side, it's even easier. You need to download the official Raspberry Pi Imager. It's free, it works on all major operating systems and it makes the process super simple. We'll be using it to install the Trixie 32-bit light operating system. And finally, you'll need a way to SSH into your Pi, which is a way to control it remotely from your main computer. Once you've got all that together, you're ready to go. All right, let's get to the work. Let's pop this thing open and do the brain transplant. Now, this part requires a bit of patience, but it's straightforward. First, flip your PicoCalc over, if not already. Now, I'm using a custom case by N602, which exposes the Pico headers. But if you're using the stock PicoCalc case, you need to take the hex key that came with your PicoCalc and unscrew the six screws. Now, if you still have the Raspberry Pi Pico connected, you need to gently pry it up from the headers. Just wiggle it back and forth until it comes loose. Don't just yank it from one side or you risk bending the pins. And now with the old Pico out, grab your Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and your jumper wires. This is where the magic happens. We need to connect the pins on the Pi Zero to the correct pins on the Pico Calc. This is the best pinout diagram that shows exactly which pin on the Pi Zero, which is on the left, connects to which pin 
on your Pico Calc. Here's another chart that might help. But in my opinion, this diagram is the easiest to follow because it perfectly matches the orientation of your headers on the Pico Calc. Make sure the SD card slot on your zero is pointed up or at the top and the camera port is pointed down or at the bottom, like this. Take your time and double check each connection against the diagram. Once all the wires are securely in place, you're good to go. That's it. Now that the hardware is ready, let's get the software on there. Okay, our PicoCalc has its new brain, but a computer without an OS is just a cool looking paperweight. So let's flash Linux onto our micro SD card. Pop your micro SD card into your computer's card reader and open up Raspberry Pi Imager. Luckily, the interface is really straightforward. First, for the device, choose Raspberry Pi 02W. And now for the operating system, scroll down and click other, and then select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. And then next click choose storage and very carefully select your micro SD card. And now go and click next. For the most important part, before you click yes, click edit settings. Here you need to set a username and password. Make sure to also add your Wi-Fi credentials. Then in the services tab, make sure enable SSH is checked and then click use password authentication. And now click save when you're done. And once you're positive you've got the right OS, the right storage and your settings are in, click yes. And then click yes again. Type in your password when prompted. The process will take a few minutes as it writes the image and then verifies it. All right, the OS is flash. Now we have to teach it how to talk to the PicoCalc screen and keyboard. Take the micro SD card out of your computer and slide it into the SD card slot of your Pi 02W. Then after that, turn on your PicoCalc. Now as a tip, you need two reliable batteries, otherwise you'll have issues with the screen later. Now if you're having battery issues, or if you think your batteries aren't strong enough, you can just plug a USB-C cable from your computer to your PicoCalc and power the PicoCalc that way. Now on your main computer, open a terminal or an SSH client and connect to the Pi. You'll type SSH followed by the username and host name you set up, like SSH jblank at jblankpi2w, and then you click enter. And now we need to type in the password we created, unless your computer configures a key fingerprint. Okay, once you're in, we have a few commands to run. First, we need to update the system and install the tools we need by typing sudo apt update, sudo apt install, git. Next, we need to download the configuration files from GitHub. I've put a link to these exact installation steps in the description below. So let's clear, git clone, github.com slash ironat slash picocalc trixie, and then click enter. Now we need to install the display, we'll copy that. Now we need to update the config file, let's copy this. And we'll do sudo nano, paste that in there. Go back to GitHub and copy all of this. 
and we're going to add this right before enable audio so right here enter control x hit y to save and then hit enter now we need to do the same for the command line text so copy this sudo nano paste that in there go back to github and now copy this here and now we're going to add it to the end of the line the easiest way is to click down and then click left add one space copy it in there and then control x y to save enter and we're good now we're going to reboot and then we'll do the next steps so sudo reboot and enter and when it finally reboots you should see a ton of text on the screen followed by a login prompt but the keyboard does not work yet that's what we're going to do now okay now before we set up the keyboard we need to set two parameters for apt so we need to create a file we'll copy this and sudo nano the file name go back to github and now we need to copy this content into the file copy control x y to save enter for yes Okay, now we're going to execute the script. Let's copy this, paste this right into here, hit enter. Okay, now we're going to set up the audio. So we need to add a line to our config file again. So copy that sudo nano paste that in go back to github and we're going to copy this dt overlay right after the audio on so scroll down right where it says enable audio and then our audio on we paste that here enter again then control x to exit y for save and then click enter and we're all set now we can reboot just like before this is the magic moment now when it finishes rebooting you can type in the username and password you created in the raspberry pi imager with its awesome keyboard password and you're in you officially have a pocket size linux computer so what can you actually do with this thing well, since you set up Wi-Fi already, you have a portable terminal for managing servers. You can install Python and play with powerful libraries. You can even install emulators for retro games. Anything you can compile for its ARM architecture is fair game. Well, in just a few steps, you've completely transformed this device. You took something made for one job and turned it into a general purpose computer that's ready for your next project. You didn't just install an app, you gave your PicoCalc a whole new identity. I want to give a huge shout out to Michael Mayer for the Trixie port and to N602 for their contributions to the project and the awesome case. Now, if you thought this guide was helpful, hitting that thumbs up really helps the channel. This kind of project is why I love open hardware and the communities around it. Be sure to subscribe for more PicoCalc projects like this one. And I really want to know, what's the first thing you're going to do with your new Linux powered PicoCalc? Let me know down in the comments. I'm Jay Blinked. Thanks for watching. Peace.